Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly recap. Now, today, all of the changes I promise will be real. There's not going to be any fake stuff in here. Uh, so what do we have to talk about this week? Well, yesterday we did get a game update, which means we received a few more changes from poll number 74, specifically to the collection log. Uh, some changes I've definitely been looking forward to for a while, but again, it was a pretty light content update. However, a bit later today, we're going to learn a lot more about Below Ice Mountain, the next major content update that is going to be coming out. And as always, we're going to be going over anything else interesting in the old school RuneScape community this week. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy, and let's get started. Okay, so yesterday's game update was titled Collection Log Improvements and The Last of Poll Number 74. And, well, I guess that title pretty much sums it all up. Okay, so first up here we have Collection Log Improvements. Now, the Collection Log is one of my favorite additions we've gotten in the last couple of years. Definitely one of my favorite quality of life features, being able to keep track of your boss count, go for completed log sections, it's really just a fun way to play the game, and to spawn dozens of different YouTube series, and it's just a really nice piece of content. Uh, so as of yesterday, they've added in now a search function to the collection log uh, to make it easier for you to find things. There are also quite a few easter eggs in there as well. For example, for Settled, Gods vs. All, TDS, and more. Now on top of adding in a new search feature, there are a few additional features that were added today. Uh, for example, there's now a new counter that will show you the total number of uniques obtained in the log. For example, right now I've collected 244 of the roughly 1300 possible collection log slots. Not that great, but you know what, we're getting there. Now in addition to this, whenever you do fill in a collection log slot, there is now a toggleable chat message. Now these features were originally available with RuneLite, however now that they are integrated directly, they are going to work a lot better, and that's just really good to have in a base client. Now as of yesterday, the color of each collection log slot will change based on how far you've gotten in the log. For example, if you have completed the entire log, it will turn green. Uh, so for example, I have completed the Hespori log, which means we have a nice little green completion text. Also, going forward for bosses that have different modes to them, for example, Dagonoth Kings, the Corrupted Gauntlet, or for challenge mode raids, there is now going to be a separate kill count to help separate those and make it a bit more clear. Now, one other nice change, in my opinion, is the Third Age and Gilded items now have their own separate a tab for rare items, which means there's now a realistic chance that players could, for example, complete the entire Elite Treasure Trail uh, collection log, or the entire Hard Treasure Trail collection log, or even maybe the entire Master Treasure Trail collection log, where previously it was pretty much impossible because it had all of the Third Age items and Gilded items in there, which are going to be nearly impossible to obtain all of them. There's also been a few new things added to the log, for example, Volcanic Mine rewards have been added under the Volcanic Mine section, and there's a few other miscellaneous items added as well. Alright, so as for poll number 74, there was just a few different changes here. One that people have been wanting for a long time is actually a giant mole pet recolor. If you use a mole claw on it, it will actually lose all its fur and become pink. So we can finally get a pink baby mole pet. Now another really interesting one is Watson will now offer you uh, blueprints for 500 gold that will show you how many stashes you've built. To get this information, you need to build the stash tracker in your POH. This is actually quite nice because otherwise you need to get a third party plugin or keep track of them manually. And finally here, one big quality of life change to the Theater of Blood is there is now going to be an additional reward chest uh, near the bank booth that will allow you to obtain loot that you may have forgotten after you defeat Lady Verzik. So hopefully no longer people will accidentally leave their mega rare scythe in the reward chest and you can now get it after you leave the raid. Now one really minor quality of life change that I know Guides for Us All is going to be happy about is the Strung Rabbit Foot Necklace now slightly increases the chance of receiving a nest egg whenever you are emptying a birdhouse. So that has now been clarified, you now do get more of those, so yeah, good luck to him. <laughs> and finally here, a small change to Temporos, the lobby time you have to wait now has been reduced to 30 seconds where previously it was 60 seconds. And that is pretty much it for all the content update this week. Now on top of this week's game update, uh, just half an hour ago the Jmods did their normal weekly Q&A and I'm pulling some of the more interesting questions and answers from that. Now a lot of these are centered around the new upcoming Below Ice Mountain quest and free to play content edition. Uh, so one of the most important questions here is when is the release date for Below Ice Mountain? And they are saying that they are looking to get it out for next week. No promises on that but that is the current schedule. Next up here, will the new equipable hammer work in Temporos? Yes, it will work in Temporos, and no, you will not lose it when you normally lose your hammer. 
what is the theoretical maximum runecrafting experience per hour with the new golem cores? Now currently in free to play the maximum XP per hour for runecrafting is around 25k per hour. However with the new golem cores you can theoretically get up to around 200k per hour. But you have to keep in mind it will take you a long time to acquire enough golem cores to be able to use all of them in an hour. So the effective experience rate per hour when you're killing golems is quite low. But if you spent dozens of hours saving them up, you could theoretically get uh, 200k per hour. Which means the only thing that this would perhaps affect is daily and weekly records. Are there plans to add in more advanced golems? And maybe eventually add in nature golems, law golems, death golems, etc. They do like the golem concept and would love to expand it in the future. Maybe if there was to be a below ice mountain too. However, they want to be careful as to not change the meta for runecrafting. How will the new Banite Mace change the meta for free to play combat and PvP? Well, it is undoubtedly going to change it a bit. However, the new Banite Mace is only going to be best in slot against golems. The combat training will naturally be much less AFK as you do have to kick the golems awake. However, of course, the benefit will be that you are going to be getting some passive runecrafting experience. However, Ogre says will probably stay at the top spot. Also, the loot from the new golems is going to be very bad. However, you will get access to the new vault, which is where most of the rewards will come from. Now, the vault is equivalent to like the fishing pool from Temporos or the crates from Winter Tot. After you've completed a lot of content in Below Ice Mountain, you will get some keys and you can then go loot the vault. Do you think there's ever going to be a way to improve the Banite Mace, the Gather Hammer, or the Karis, similar to how the Arclight works? They said they do like the idea of expanding Bane weapons like this, but they're not really sure exactly where these would be useful. However, in the future, if there's new content, they could add them in. Could you make the new upcoming equipable hammer an offhand slot item? Unfortunately, it would just be too much work for a very minimal reward. Do you want a new hammer or raids 3? Now one future reward idea that they mentioned during the live stream would be to add in some kind of ancient key uh, to the vault that would be fairly rare that would give you a certain amount of charges at killing uh, one of the free to play bosses, for example the hill giant boss or the moss giant boss. There would just be a rare chance of getting perhaps an ancient key that has 5 charges on it for example, so there would be another way to be able to kill those bosses. And that's pretty much it for all of the new information regarding Below Eyes Mountain. There were a couple other general questions but nothing too interesting. The only thing I want to mention is Madaiza seems to heavily imply that there should be some new information coming for more major content releases in the near future. I, honestly, I don't quite understand why they're being so aloof about their plans for future content releases. I get they don't want to make promises, but I think a lot of people, including myself, are very curious as to what the next year is really going to look like, uh, so hopefully we're going to get that soon. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for this week's content update and for this week's weekly recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Now before I go here, I'm going to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. A massive thank you to Cappy, Sage's Rain, Colin Corley, Timothy Chen, Guy Fox, 1227, Valhalla Lad, Brad Sings, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all subscribing at the Dragon Tier of YouTube membership. The list is very long and I appreciate all of you guys so much. Also a big thank you to Brenton Griffin, Base Titch, All Things Gaming, and Birdbot for subscribing at the Rune Knight tier. Thanks again guys. As always, if any of you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in all of my future videos, get access to my video release schedule, and of course get a custom role in my Discord server. Thanks a lot guys, and I'll see you next time.